Hey KL, um, this is on continuous, uh, uh, this is a continuation of the PC Matt video talking about, you know, why people are using the OS they're using. Um, BR Tidwell actually made a good point, uh, which is a lot of people are surrounded by Linux whether they realize it or not. And they're actually fixing to be surrounded by Linux more. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Android is in negotiations with TV companies, uh, you know, digital cable and satellite producers to uh, help make some of those boxes, if not eventually all, run on a version of Android. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, a, it's just going to depend how that licensing works out, and there's a little bit of a divide going on right now between Google and the Linux community, because... For those of you who don't know, the Android tree and the Linux tree are no longer the same thing. That's not to say that Android isn't still Linux, it's just parts of Android are developing independently of Linux and parts of Linux are developing independently of Android. Uh, down the road this may become interesting because things may only work on Android and may not work on Linux or vice versa. Um, it's more likely to be one way than the other, but we'll just see how that comes out. Uh, but, you know, a lot of cell phones, uh, various devices, other things, run some minimalistic version of the Linux kernel designed specifically for application. You know, he pointed out routers, so on and so forth. Uh, as a matter of fact, at one point, Linksys got in trouble for that because part of the Linux licenses, it must remain open source and it, the source code must be viewable and accessible. And Linksys was not making the source code of their routers accessible. I think that's been worked out now, but you know, that was interesting. Uh, regarding the KDE and Microsoft working together, um, I'm not sure that's as altruistic as you, you made it out to be. Um, I know you're just replying to what I said, but um, all we, what's known is when you go to the KDE site, you know, there's, there's a section of it that talks about Microsoft development, and at conventions, you know, KDE and Microsoft have been hanging out together, and it knows there's talks going on. The specifics of these agreements are not known. It's not knowing if Microsoft came to KDE or if KDE went to Microsoft that makes a big difference. It could be KDE using Microsoft to help fund them. It could be Microsoft trying to buy KDE, and if it becomes apparent that KDE isn't going to sell right out to them, the whole thing may fall apart. But for now, it's a stable relationship that's moving forward. Um, now, I am going to piss off many of my subscribers. I'm probably going to piss you off a little BR Tidwell, and I am going to piss off the Ubuntu community in general. You made the comment about, you know, netbooks being sold with Linux, and most of them are being sold with a version of Ubuntu. And for those of you who don't know, there's not a Walmart PC that is the cheapest cheapy box possible being sold with Ubuntu. <laughs> I honestly blame projects like this for the general common misconception that Linux is not user-friendly. I'm going to explain that before y'all bite my head off. Even the most adamant Ubuntu user will acknowledge that out of the box, Ubuntu isn't quite all there. Don't get me wrong, it's got a lot better in the last few years. But it's still not quite all there. Back when those netbooks were being made, that was worse. You know, there were problems like out of the box, you could not play an MP3. Uh, it's like and th there were legal reasons for that, and I, and I, I know I understand. But it was one of those things. I don't think Linux was quite ready for prime time when that happened, especially Ubuntu. You know, if you're going to go the Ubuntu route for the end user for a system to do that with, you, you do it more like a system like Mint. Um, 
So, it's like, and I blame that because to this day, when somebody says Linux don't do this, Linux can't do this, Linux is hard to use, the ones who've heard of Linux and know about it, those machines are what they're talking about. They're talking about somebody who used one of those and couldn't figure it out and sent it back. And yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it has poisoned Linux in a way that is not yet fully understood. And Linux has a lot of work to do to get over the damage control caused by that. Again, I'm not saying Ubuntu is a bad OS. I'm just saying for the average novice user, Ubuntu is not the best foot forward to put for Linux. And Ubuntu needs to stop trying to do that. Ubuntu needs to be Ubuntu. If Ubuntu wants to do that, it needs to partner up with Mint and help push Mint in that arena and do things like that. It's, and I'm sorry if I piss people off and I'm sorry for saying that, but it's like it damaged Linux credibility. It did. It's like people to this day still think the end-all, judge-all of what Linux and how user-friendly Linux is capable of being is Ubuntu. Now, I want to move on to the other topic he said about, and hopefully too many people don't bite my head off on that. Um, he started talking about Ubuntu getting flack for being a spin-off distro, which is what it is. And PC Linux is a spin-off distro. Uh, PC Linux is a spin-off distro. Here's how Linux distros develop. Um, there's a good core Linux distro, and it starts to go the direction it's going to go. At some point, there is a philosophical disagreement, and it forks. Sometimes it forks in two, sometimes in four, sometimes it's not. But the philosophical disagreements on how this distro should continue to develop wind up making other spin-off distros. In the case of Ubuntu, there was a fork in Debian, and Ubuntu was born. And it's, you know, like you said, they get flack for dumbing stuff down because there are certain people in the Linux community who are only happy in terminal and only happy, yeah, yeah, I'm making my machine, I'm doing it all myself, I'm making it sign. There is a new breed of Linux distros that have started coming out over, I want to say, the last five years, and Ubuntu is one of them, that their end all goal is being user friendly. Which means, yeah, some things aren't necessarily completely tweaked like a true Uber geek would tweak them. But it's a system that's largely usable for the end user. And really, Mint, in a lot of ways, is a spin-off of Ubuntu that just took that about that much further. Uh, and I'm sure Mint gets as much flack from Ubuntu as Ubuntu does from Debian. And uh, Although the real reason Ubuntu gets a lot of flack from Debian is when that particular fork happened, they took some of Debian's best programmers. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and, you know, like, uh, I forget what it was. I forget if it was Mandark or Mandrake, but back in the early XP days is when I really first took note of Linux through Mandark or whatever spun off into Madriva, that old core. I, I, I still can't remember this. Hey, it wasn't cooked. It wasn't a particularly user-friendly, but you could tell by looking at the GUI, and that was a very early KDE distro, that there were elements here. I ultimately wound up not using it as my OS because I didn't want to have to do things like manually configure all my TCIP settings and everything else, and manually add other things and certain drivers and other things, but it was there. It was one of those things you could tell this has another few years to cook, it will be a really good OS. And it did, and it became Madriva, and then it spun off into PC Linux in 04, and, and, and both of those, and Madriva's continued to develop, and PC Linux has continued to develop, and Debian has continued to develop as Ubuntu can be so They're just going in different ways. And this is how Linux distros develop. Um, and really what I recommend you do is when those forks happen, you follow the fork that makes sense to you. Um, and, you know, change is how things grow. I'm coming up on time, so, I, you know, I'll expand more on this after I get uh, BR Tidwell's response on this to know what's going on. Hopefully I didn't offend anyone too much by bashing on Ubuntu there. So, again, I'm not attacking Ubuntu. I just think 
it hurt Linux because Ubuntu's not necessarily the best for that.